Hey guys, Friday, June 28, 2024. Let's check out US dollar. Man, I had to go to the doctor this morning and they put me in anesthesia. Never been under anesthesia. Have you ever been in anesthesia? Where they put you to sleep? It's the most, um, I don't know. Now in hindsight, it's the most amazing thing. The lady was like, yeah, you're just gonna just like fall asleep. And I was a little nervous, uh, but I was like humming this song that I really like, that I've been listening recently. It's called He Won't Fail. I'll put a link on the uh, description in the bottom if you want to check it out. But I was I just love the music. I love the arrangement, the voice, the lyrics, the words. And I just kept just singing that song, the verse, the chorus, the bridge. And I was just in a loop, and she just increased that uh, that amnesia. And I knocked out like a baby. <laughs> I woke up and I was like, I was like, did the doctor come? He's like, oh no, it's all done. It's, we're already done. The procedure took 25 minutes. And I was like, wow, that is crazy. Amnesia is like, <laughs> that's just crazy stuff. I was like, uh, now I'm not afraid of it. I was a little nervous, but I'm good. So anyway, I digress. Sorry, I shared that uh, personal information, but I figured just for those that, uh, having never tried amnesia don't be afraid it's not that bad all right with the dollar i'm going to start off let's start off with the monthly let's look at our monthly count on this dollar so we got let's see so we got let's put the little cross here so around uh may 31st of 2011 that's a way five one two three four on a five on the monthly. So you know what that means? Is there like an A, B, C correction coming down? Mm, I don't know, but it's interesting. According to the Elliott Wave theory. Let's go into the weekly and see what's there. You can see the Stokes are positive. They're pushing higher. Uh, on the weekly, obviously that one uh, 14 high, that's your wave three. And this is a four. These little bands tell you if we go below it, you're wrong. It's going to go lower, and so far that held. Now it's an ABC. You got wave four here, and it looks like it's looking for a wave five projection of 115. Is there a higher one? I mean, if it really wants to go crazy, the dollar is going to be 124. So those are you two on the weekly. I did an extension from this move from right here. You got the 100 is 108, which kind of makes sense if it's going to be blowing off steam. But baby steps, we need to close above 106 and we need to kiss 107 to at least get to 108 and 113. And that's on the Fibonacci extension. And target, like I said, 115. If that's going to get up there, uh, it's interesting, especially the uh, first week of July. Uh, on the daily, it gets a little more interesting. Uh, looks like this is a wave one. It says one. I feel like this could be one, but it's fine. This definitely is two, three, four, and we're working on a wave five, then 107, which makes sense because 107, if we make this a little smaller. Uh, that's 107 somewhere around here 10735 so it's a little higher than that so 10761 that is where the uh, wave 5 on the daily but you know what we are chopping around stalling but it is bullish uh, they, we cannot hide that it is bullish i'm just noticing that we just kind of having a tough time at the uh, 106 which is the 180 degree on the gan square of 9 so naturally, 106 is just pretty much 180 degrees. It's just resistance just by the number itself, you know, if you believe the GAN theory. So I could kind of see that happening. Uh, but once we do break above there, uh, there's a high probability that we at least get to 106.53, but not still getting out of the 106, you know, uh, price target or level. We need to push with force to kiss 107 because once you get 107 you are above the 180 degree but you're you know you're above it by a point so it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough nut to crack but if it does and baby steps we take out 10651 then 10734 this is projecting away five if you know if you really want to go you know 
a wave five. It could probably go over here, 109, right below the uh, 113 or 114 high. Okay, back to my regular chart. As you can see, if you do a trend line from here, you can see that there's some kind of resistance building up. That is having a tough time breaking there. Uh, you could probably do a trend line from here, from here, uh, you know, somewhere like that. But it's definitely creating some kind of wedge. And it's like baby steps from 106 to uh, 107. And that's what I'm watching. But value area low, it's a 103, so it's it's good. I got some good support down here. And there's the uh, 107.58 as a target value area high using a five-year uh, weekly chart. And on the topic of market profile, there's someone on YouTube that wants me to... Uh, Kind of explain this setup um, on my market profile. If you are interested, uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to elaborate on this this setup or the way I have it set up on my chart. I'm assuming maybe you have a think or swim, but if you don't, I could do a video showing my setup and then as an alternative, if you don't have you know think or swim or you you use a trading view. Trading view is a very popular. Um, trading software i love it i i just i just love more uh, think or swim but i love trading view it has a, they have a lot of cool stuff especially if you pay the uh, monthly fee you get a lot of extra tools but i believe you can still use it i'll look into it but let me know in the comments if you're interested in the market profile that i use i think this is very essential i think it's like it's like a carpenter you know you got your hammers you got your your drill your screwdriver. I think this is like essential and it's so easy and so simple. You got just three levels, value area high, point of control, and value area low. That's it. And, and you could just kind of decipher these areas right here. And I could probably teach you some things if you're interested on how to look at, you know, but it's a very simple thing and it, it just plots it out there and you just could kind of see some levels and kind of get an idea uh what's going on in regards to uh volume anyway i digress let's go into the chart here so this is what i'm noticing we're having a tough time around 106 106 13 so we're lagging here stalling i don't know whatever you want to call it just kind of getting just choppy back and forth the candles are white so the trend is up but we're having a tough time and I already told you why, and I'm sure there's probably other things I could look into and, and, and decode and be like, oh yeah, look, in the, in the square of nine, yeah, or the GAN grid, I can see why we're having a tough time here. But we are having a tough time trying to get above there. And uh, July, the first week of July, in June, July, actually more July, July, August, I know that the spectrum cycle uh, is bottoming out. Um, but there's some other things I noticed on the Euro that I, I'm, I might probably do a video in the future. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. What's going to happen with this dollar? Let me see if I have something to put here. My, uh, juice pitchfork. Yeah. I mean, it's still holding here. You're kissing the uh, 25%, which is this line right here and haven't even gotten there. So you're just kind of, you know, just trying to hold on. Um, and is now pulling back, but still kind of holding. So we'll see. Let's look at our simple glance chart. And you can see that we are right here. We haven't broken the mobile band or at least close. We just kind of peek at it and then kind of pull in. The MACD is still positive. You're above the cloud. You're above the 20 on the monthly on the daily. Uh, you really don't have a higher high. Uh, because I would have been like, well, you know, we have divergence, but you not, you haven't even taken this out. So there is no divergence. It's just kind of like naturally what's going on with uh, the dollar. It's just mimicking it evenly, not overextend it. So you could say divergence. So that's ruled out. And you got a Woody's R1 right here at 105.82, but just kind of having a tough time. You're hovering around there of 105.78. Uh, Above the mobile bands, above the 20, above the 50, I'm sure you're above somewhere, the uh, 200 and the 100. Above the cloud, uh, linear regression channels pointing up on the monthly. On the weekly, it's kind of sideways. 
And on the dailies, kind of, you know, sideways to higher, just kind of grinding higher above the cloud. The cloud looks positive in the future. And you're above the 20, the 50, the 100. I'm sure you're above the 200. And you're just kind of chopping around here. There is a, a month, I believe that's a monthly pivot. I think that is. But either way, yeah, because that's the value area high. And you're just chopping around there. The only thing I notice is that the MACD is now starting to get negative. So could this be a reversal for next week? Will be interesting. Because uh, Elliot Wave says, you know, you got Wave 5 somewhere up there between the daily and the uh, weekly. But on the monthly, you already got a Wave 5 on the uh, 114 high. So, two things I'm looking at. Maybe if the Elliott Wave is right on the bigger time frame, we're working on an ABC correction. Maybe we're going to get to at least kiss, you know, 107 around there, maybe 113. Or maybe, you know, kind of stall early and maybe go down. But all, you know, it's all in contingent that we start taking, you know, the moving averages start closing below the cloud probably hit this linear regression channel we'll probably get a bounce and maybe somewhere a fail new high and then continue and that's when you can kind of tell but then on the opposite side the opposite spectrum the weekly cycle is bottoming out you know i believe in july july august so it's like if it pulls back then you probably get spooked because now you don't even know if this is really when it's going to really kick and rock and roll and then on top of that you got everybody on YouTube saying that the dollar is going to crash, that the that the Saudis and the uh, Russians and, you know, all these other countries, the BRICS and everybody are going to plummet the dollar. So you got all that going on. So there's a lot of noise. And I understand, you know, there could probably be some, you know, misinformation or whatever, or a lot of weird stuff floating around. But the dollar has been grinding, but we're having a tough time. So the video that for this purpose is that we're having a tough time around 106. We need a breakthrough there with force. I mean, can we chop around here, maybe pull back? But it needs to, it needs to grind higher because uh, something has to give. We got to get out of this rut here that we're in. Let's look at the uh, midpoint chart. And you can see that we had a tough time here, and that was a Tom D. Mark knife candle which is really good. You know, this is weekly, so this would have been good if you went short because it was kind of telling you that, you know, we're going to probably have a you know turning point in the mobile, kind of confirmed it, EPSL signal, boom. Tom D. Mark, wow, Tom D. Mark knife can, uh, TD9 has been working great, getting all the turning points. I haven't seen that in a while, but it's uh, actually working with the dollar. But anyway, you know, if we fail here, this is that 107. Right here is this pivot. Let's open this up a little more. So you kind of see that this is that 106 that we, we're having a tough time at this key level. And we got a doji undecided, still holding the 75, which is that 105 and 39. But the mobiles are negative. So this kind of tells you, it's like, eh, you know, it's kind of risky. Kind of reminds you of Nat Gas on the four hour when it was like, well, Nat Gas was worse. It was under the mobile. And we were grinding, you know, rallying in the overnight session into the US session. And then on Nat Gas, they just pounced on it and pushed it lower. I think they kissed 263, maybe 260 now. Uh, but 263 is a key level. But I digress. So this is what kind of concerns me. We're very overextended on the uh, some of the two stokes here. So let's see on the uh, weekly. But that was definitely bullish on the monthly, on the daily, actually. You can see that they're selling, they're selling it up here. And we're in the mobile, and things are now kind of slowly grinding lower. So we'll, we'll see. It's still positive, like I said. I mean, you're above... Midpoints on the yearly, on the weekly, on the monthly. The midpoint, obviously, you already know if you've been following me, is these green lines. This is the midpoint, so it's bullish. I mean, it's bullish. On the uh, on the four hour, which is the uh, weekly levels, this one's a little different because uh, this one now the uh, midpoint has raised up to one hundred five seventy five. So you can see that we've bounced off here. 
Uh, and this is your midpoint. So next week, this is going to be the line in the sand. Can we now hold and really push, take out these highs and push higher? Is it going to bounce and that dead cat bounce and go through there? If it goes through there, I mean, it, had, it did it here. And it was a couple of, you know, it was a couple of four hour candles until it regained it. Uh, so it never kissed the 25. So if you crack it next week here, you don't want to take out the 25 or get close to it like it did here. It's showing signs of strength. Uh, but if it does, then that's not good, especially if it does kiss, you know, last week's uh, low of 105.37. So anything around here is going to be showing me signs of weakness. And if it bounces and fails here, that's when I'm going to get aggressive. Not shorting the dollar, but going long the euro. As you can see, this is kind of the setup. The mobile kind of keeps you in check. So any bounces here and this indicator doesn't turn like this, it's a bull trap to go down. And lastly, let's look at the uh, hour. It's just, uh, it's just chop, just chop. This is the uh, 200 moving average. And you can see that it's finding support. Now it's... As of now, it's having a tough time, but you never know next week. If it could get up above there, your midpoint for uh, Monday or Tuesday, or next, uh, pretty much Monday, uh, 105.93. We need to get up there at least to test these highs. Uh, we can close or get above 105.93. Uh, it's either going to go sideways or lower as you can see the indicators indicating that and lastly i think that's it i don't want to make this video too long you guys already know the uh, 106 is the 90 degree uh the, the 180 degree on the square of nine and it's just it's just chopping around there it needs to break above that uh at least it go to uh, at least 111 or something like that I'm going to sign out. Hopefully you like this video. Let me know your comments, your thoughts on the dollar. Are we grinding higher? Are we going to stall? Is there a turning point? It's the first week of July. Going to really now bring, you know, more downside. Uh, I've seen some things where the euro looks like it starts popping or starts grinding higher after July 1st, 2nd, that first week. So I don't know if this is the beginning of it where they're going to turn it down and euro is going to go up. I don't know. We'll see. We'll look at price action. Price action is king. And uh, I'll uh, let you go. I'm just trying to catch up with some videos because I'm going to be busy this weekend. Uh, so I'm trying to put out as much as I can so you guys have some good content. I'll keep you posted on my thoughts on the U.S. dollar.